Welcome to the show that looks at truth, fiction, and reality with a smirk. I'm Aaron Peterson. I'm Amanda Sink. And I'm Zach Parkerson. And welcome to Smirk, where each week we're going to talk about a story that one of our authors writes, then we're going to discuss what that story means, the moral, and what they're really wanting to get down and talk about. And I can't wait to hear this week's version of What's Wrong with Zach. Welcome to Zach's Trauma, the side show that we run on Smirk. <laughs> right? Whenever it's Zach's story, which it is this week, we kind of wonder exactly where it's going to go. Well, also, that trauma is emphasized in every episode as well. <laughs> By his responses. Well, it was a food one. We just had a food one. And, and somehow he brought somehow it dark. Somehow childhood <laughs> trauma came just, into you it. You asked how I bonded with my friends. I gave you an honest answer. Sadly. <laughs> that's how. Yes, that's how. Sadness. God. Oh, oh, so understand. can you give us a hint about this week's episode? I ain't going to give you the title, even though people are already looking at the title. Less fun for you guys, if you know it. I will say it's a, it's a story, story about youth. Hmm. You know, tri- childhood frolicking. Great. This is going to be so tragic and depressing. Joils, joys of children. I would I would not say this is a particularly dark episode. What? 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 Are you say, taking on I that challenge? So. I don't know. Hang on. Well, yeah, he wouldn't say so. So ch- kids definitely die in this story. Let's email this <laughs> well, listener if this turns out to be a happy story and let her know that he took on her challenge. Oh, yeah. He did get a challenge from a listener to mm-hmm. tell a happy story. Uh, her name Amber? Mm-hmm. It well, was Amber. We haven't gotten through a story yet, though, so hold off. <laughs> yeah, no, and I also I don't think I'd email her this week. <laughs> See, it's already going to go dark. Well, why, well you it know, could be it could be dark and not happy. It could. Those be. two things could be true at the same time. Sure, sure. All right, yeah, you know what? Geez. Take us through it. Let's find out for ourselves. Okay, before we do this, you guys want to hear a swift smirk story? Yeah, is this like a side thing? <laughs> yeah, this is just something I'm bringing to the table. How many side projects are we going to have on the show? Sweet. And if Aaron hates it, he can cut it. <laughs> okay. But I think it's going to be a fun way to get into my not as funny story. Oh, so it's going to be a mood breaker. Yeah, it's an icebreaker for listeners if you choose to keep it. Okay. It's it's really short. I feel like I've been built. I feel like I've built it up as long as it will take to tell the quick story. Let's However, go. You got this. Oh, okay. So let's go. What do I call him? Mike. So Mike. He's at a bar drinking and he's about, he's like 21 years old and he meets an older woman. She's 35 or so. Anyway, they have a, then have a good time. They go back to her place. They fool around. Let's say they fool <laughs> around a few more times after that. Mm. So anyway, but so Mike grows up, he's probably about 35 now and he meets this cute 20 year old girl at the bar and the tables are a bit turned, right? So mm-hmm. he's kind of seeing the other side of it. She says, she says, my parents aren't home, which is already, he should probably have stopped right then and there. <laughs> Generally. Yeah. But he goes <laughs> with her to her place and he's like, man, this, this kind of place kind of looks familiar. No! Oh God. No. no! <laughs> <laughs> you are joking right now. Finish the story. So, Finish so the no story. kidding. About 15 years later in this guy's life, he is, hey, he's going to the same house <laughs> with the woman's daughter. <laughs> Did he do uh, it? Did he do it? Did the he best do it? part of the story, however, is hey Mike, did you end up you got out of there right away? No, of, of course not. I hooked over there that night a few times after. <laughs> oh my oh. god. Did he leave did he leave mom a note on the fridge does, or something? Does she know? The good, thing, the good thing her parents was actually her parents were actually gone. No. <laughs> no. Uh, according to him, they never went back to her place to do anything because he couldn't take the risk. <laughs> Wow. That would be amazing. Now he just needs That's to get what? grandma and he's got the whole line. Yeah. Or get yeah, wait for that girl to have a kid. Wait, what if it was his daughter? Oh. <gasps> just she's a few years too. Few old. years. I did the math before I made that statement. Don't worry. <laughs> would that have that would have been an even cooler story? I didn't. I was just like, wait, what if it is? <laughs> that would be a gross, gross, gross story. That's why. Yeah, you would have already heard the story on Dr. Phil. Man, that's still a pretty messed up story and hilarious. I love it. You say messed up. I think it's kind of cool. It, obviously, <laughs> they want him in their family. <laughs> Is she? Yeah. Are they still like a thing? No. Well, how do you Aww. keep dating when you know you slept with the girl's mom? You, you can't. You can't ask her to marry you because you're gonna have to eventually meet your mother-in-law, who you once banged. <laughs> That'd be a great toast. 
<laughs> to the man that I know really gets it done right. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, wow. wow. That's a great one. That would have been a great just normal episode story. Would you sleep with someone else with the ten girl? <laughs> yeah. You, you know, I was considering that, but I really don't know what kind of questions we're going to be able to ask without getting to the explicit tag. So <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I love that. Tell your quote unquote friend, uh, <laughs> high five. Yeah, definitely not me. I'm not Mike. <clears throat> and really, you had to ask him, would you, st- why would, why would, why would you leave? They're yeah, two completely I, different I people. Anyway, did I'm he, sorry. did he rate him on a scale? <laughs> like, <laughs> who is better? Who is oh, better? that would have been awesome. I should have. Very wrong in a, every way, but still funny. I would assume the older woman, right? She's got more experience. I'm anyway. not touching this with a 10-foot pole. There's no right answer. Nope. <laughs> See, this is why you couldn't make an episode out of it. <laughs> Probably not. All right, let's get into your real story. Well, All right, yeah. Well, how are you going to compete well, with that? You know what? Get into your real story while I sit over here and contemplate your previous story. <laughs> In reflection. <laughs> to yourself with the mic muted. All right. <laughs> uh, gather around the campfire for a story that's not going to live up to what I just told. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good. <laughs> Chris, Chaz, and Jake were three brothers, pretty close in age. We'll call them 14, 12, and 11, respectively. Making Chris the eldest, Jake the youngest, Chaz in the middle. Guess their folks just couldn't pump the brakes. Now, on days after school, the brothers three would often explore as kids do. The bike paths, the abandoned warehouse near the home, woods nearby. They would often be out long past when the sun went down, and even later still. Their parents never seemed in mind. Of course, they got in their fair share of shenanigans, trouble here, trouble there, but mom and dad really found out. Siblings tend to have a pretty tight lips when it comes to one another's secrets. One day, Jake tells his big bros of this monster of a kid that he knows. Jake hung out with this kid once in the treehouse behind his house. But the little psycho started grabbing frogs from the nearby river and torturing them. Ripping limbs off, slashing them up. Real silly killer and training type stuff. So the brothers hatch a plan. They know the route to the kid's house through the nearby woods. They had spent so much time in them, they knew how to get through the whole neighborhood, no trouble at all. Combined with the knowledge that serial killer boy was going to be in his martial arts class this day. Smart move, teaching that kids more ways to destroy things, by the way. Getting in was no bother. So they sneak their way into the kid's treehouse and do the only thing teenage boys can think to avenge those frogs. They wreck shop of the place, breaking everything in it using the serial killer kid's own baseball bat. They smash everything, including all the windows. Rich kids get the best tree houses. Eventually, their ruckus draws the attention of the neighbors. They claim the cops have been called, so the brothers bail. Chris and Chaz leave immediately, but Jake's running behind. The brainiac decided to jump, just jump down. Probably would have been okay if he hadn't landed on a shard of glass from the broken window. He went right through the shoe and into his foot. Now, Chris and Chaz are solid brothers, so they limp their little brother all the way home. Luckily, the folks are out, so they sneak into the bathroom and get to work. Chris manages to pull the glass free of the foot, and Chaz manages to bandage the womb with what was in the house. They clean up the mess well. This isn't the first rodeo cleaning up a mess. Through a combination of reappropriation of lunch money and five-finger discounts, they manage to keep bandages incoming to Jake's foot. Jake's foot bleeds a lot and hurts like hell, but keeping a big wound a secret always comes with a price. And the parents were never the wiser. That's my story. Hmm. Wow, that was really freaking dark. I like the sexy one better. <laughs> Zach, I don't know anyone dark? who can make something as dark as you can. Somehow, <laughs> this is your this is your talent is to make any moment in life sad and almost appalling and shocking. But it w- I saw it as brotherly love. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, no, just talking about ripping limbs off of frogs. Loyalty, and- well, you know what, was, they were the kid. doing that was a, the other kid. They were doing a good thing, trying to stop a serial killer in action by scaring the pants mm-hmm. out of him so he stops before he starts. But he already started. I'm wow. with- Couldn't agree more, Aaron. Exactly. He's saving lives. <laughs> These kids know what they're up to. Yep. And then his brothers, they stood by him. They took. They t- they stayed by his side. Yeah, and no snitching. You know what I'm saying? But then again, I don't know what the moral is. I, I guess. Yeah. What do you think the moral of the story is? <laughs> is this like an inner story from your childhood? Were you the one with the frogs? That, now you're getting ahead. Jump with the gun on the podcast. <laughs> Were you the one with the frogs? Uh, I think it's no matter what, bro- brothers will have your back. Okay. Okay. Amanda? I don't know because I want to say something positive and uplifting like Aaron just did, but it's your story. 
<laughs> so but yeah, the moral of the story is you gotta get better tree houses so you can secure your kill then. <laughs> Are you joking? No, you're not yes, joking. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm joking. Yeah, this is my confession, everyone. I am a serial killer. <laughs> kind of disappointed. I was really hoping that was the moral. Uh, I really, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess something along the, the lines of what Aaron said. What is the real moral? Okay. The moral is going to tell you a little bit about how I'm going to answer some of my questions. But my moral is kids need to find themselves in trouble. Mm. Okay. There you go. I got you. You following? Manda, you following? I feel you. I'm sorry. You can't see me nodding. I nodded and I looked up to the right. Oh, okay. No, no that's good that. for radio. Yeah, yeah nodding. <laughs> it really sells a podcast. <laughs> All right. It seems almost universally agreed upon these days that kids have less freedom. Is this a good or a bad thing? Well. Come on, Miss Psychology. I, yeah, there you go. I don't really that know expertise. that they have less freedom. I mean, in in some ways, I feel like they do, and I see your point. But in other ways, in terms of their ability to go out and do something without parental consent seems to be more common. And there's also not as much monitoring for social media and online activities. So I feel like that gives them a lot of freedom, too. I agree with, I agree with the internet, but you don't think kids are more reined in when it comes to going outside? Well, but I don't feel like that's a restriction of their freedom. I think that's a choice. I think mm, that's a choice think, that they're making based on I think on we their... might have fundamental disagreements about human nature. Mm. Well, I mean, do you really no, think that it's do you really think it's not a choice that they go like what 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 else is the reason for them not going outside? The from the parents' perspective? Well, I'm talking from like the kids' perspective. Well, because their parents told them to and they suck. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, I, I think I think the freedom is important. I think I feel like I see a lot of parents these days being more restrictive than I remember my parents being, and I certainly more than the stories you hear from your grandparents. But in in some ways, I feel like there's the restrictions they have are more about protecting them because there is a lot more bad things out there, if you will. It's more common and prevalent, and and whether that's completely the truth or whether it's just more acknowledged because of the news and we have media sources from the internet in terms of social media, websites, blogs, actual radio, actual TV news stations. We have a lot more ways that kind of get that information to us. But I also feel like there really is a higher rate of crime. So in terms of limiting children, I feel like it's not a restriction of their freedoms. Sometimes it's just a protective nature to keep them safe. But I don't think that it's I don't think kids sitting inside is really about their parents' decision. I feel like the majority of it is the kids' decision and their laziness. And whether that comes on the kids or it comes on the parents for raising them that way and not forcing them to do things, there's still a lot of intellectually engaging activities that you can do inside, but you really should have your kid also trying to do stuff outside and keeping their activity levels higher. And I mean, if you don't if you don't have them burning off all that energy that they're create that they have and it just kind of like builds up throughout the day they're going to get to their end of the day their end of their day and they're going to have a hard time going to sleep and sleeping throughout the night which is going to make everything worse for the next day so i feel like it's a perpetual thing that continues on and i don't really see it as a restriction from the parents and their freedoms i think it's just the choice that are choices that are made kids don't want to go outside because there's not other kids going outside i'm kind of with amanda on this one actually i i don't I mean, I guess I kind of see what you're saying, but I really think, if anything, parents are lack, more lax nowadays because they just let their kids do whatever they want. You can go on, you be on social media, and you did, 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 and they're not making them go outside and get into trouble. And you know, I don't think it's so much restrictive as it is. Parents are busy; they're living their lives; they're not really paying as much attention. Kids are more focused on video games and electronic and technology, all things of technology, social media. Everybody's obsessed with social media, so they're just all they do is look at their phone. If they were outside, all they would do is look at their phone outside. And here's another great point. I'll I'll make this quick because, Zach, I'm sure you have a lot you want to say too. But kids are going to imitate their parents. When parents are lazy, they get home from work and they have a lot of things they could be doing. Let's say inactive. Inactive. Okay. Sorry, I won't say lazy. Well, I mean, this is what I do too. (laughs) But anyway, so when somebody gets home, they have a long day. They kind of want to just relax. A lot of people go to social media or a movie or – 
Um, they'll play a video game or something. Those children are going to imitate their parents' actions. If the parents aren't out being active and doing something outside, maybe with their kids, the kids are going to see that action and be like, wow, well, then I guess I should just hang out inside and watch YouTube or play a game or whatever, just like the parents would do. That's not always because of the parents. So I think sometimes kids just see their friends doing it or they're inclined to sit around and play video games. That's just what they like. But I mean, if your parent is the one helping engage you in outside activities. Parents should say, let's go outside. Let's go. Let's go get outside. Yeah. Why don't you go out with your friends? Oh, you don't have any that actually go outside? Well, then let's go outside you and I or something. Yeah. Right. And if they take them outside or if they if they just continue to do outside activities, they're going to see that as a common aspect of life. And they're going to be like, wow, well, dad goes outside or mom goes outside for a walk every day with the dog or whatever. And you can make that a family activity. So there's a lot of ways that parents could be engaging their kids in outside activities. But they kids do mimic their adult, their, you know, all of their elders they're going to imitate in some form. But Zach, you don't feel that way. You, you feel like it's more restrictive? Different. You don't think 11 to 14 year old kids try to do the opposite of what their parents do? I, I think that is true. But I also think most 11 to 14 year old, actually, you know, probably 10 to 25 year olds would prefer to be on their phone or playing a video game or watching a movie than they would be outside doing some kind of physical activity or I feel raiding like, a treehouse like, of a kill den. I feel like they don't get the chance. I feel like people think crime is much more prevalent than it is, even though crime rates have gone down 50% since the 60s or whatever the hell it is. But the, we live in a, such a fear culture with our media that everyone thinks if they send their kid outside, they're going to get kidnapped within the minute. That's just not the case. Uh, according so, to all my true crime podcasts, it's all true. <laughs> you walk outside. You listen, Aaron, you really got to stop listening to those. I guys, really right? do, man, because I walk outside and I'm like, who's that some bitch? I don't know you. And it's the mailman. I mean, they didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and he does, it, and you do know him. I do. <laughs> Why is your hand in my mailbox? Oh, never mind. Sorry. Uh, no, I think I think kids have. When I was a kid, it was go wherever you want, just be home by the time the sun goes down, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Same here. And by the time I had my little cousins, who are about 15, 20 years younger than me, when they were kids, it was you can go to the end of the street. And I feel like it's gotten too like, eh, maybe just hang out in the driveway. And now it's just, eh, well, just stay inside. And staying inside is a lot easier because of media or technology and social media and video games and all that. But I feel I I love video games more than most people I know. I still found plenty of reasons to go outside when my parents were letting me. I just I feel like I feel like kids aren't getting the same freedoms, and I think that is because the parents are scared. That's possible. I don't think that's fair to the kids. It's possible, but I, th man, I, I would not be able to, I would not, I just couldn't agree with you that I, that's the majority. To me, from the kids that I've witnessed, so like friends of mine that have kids, you know, that age and whatnot, it's the kids. Like they're constantly complaining that they can't get them out of the house. They don't want to go outside. They don't want to play sports. They don't want to do this. They don't want to exercise or go out and pl play ball or catch or whatever. Just do something outside the house. All they want to do is sit on their phone or talk to their friends or Insta or Pinterest or whatever the hell or Snapchat, whatever. <laughs> yes, Snapchat. -le. Yeah, it's a new one. Haven't you heard? Nobody uses Snapchat anymore. <laughs> I haven't heard because I don't use it, so I, I wouldn't know. Interesting. Anyway, would you, do you consider these parents in the story neglectful for not <laughs> noticing their children's injury? Uh, neglectful? Yeah. No, that's a heavy term. No, not at all. Not at all. Because if all right, how if, about dumb? You consider the parents dumb? No, absolutely not. Okay. If that were the case, I would have to call my mom neglectful and dumb because she didn't know all the stuff that I did, and she was neither one of those things. So no, absolutely not. I think kids are excellent at masking the things that they want to hide, and that's why there's so much. I mean, parents already have such a hard time understanding their children and the things that they're able to hide from their parents is it just makes everything a little bit worse. So I think that kids are just kind of masters at their secrets and being able to hide things. Okay, let me. Are you really uh, like me, watching me, every aspect of your child? Parent you here a second. No, hey, I, I know. I, I mean, I agree that kids the are masters. Crafty masters. Yeah. Let me let me throw some adult in down here. Some as uh, the only parent here. Let me tell you. It's not so much the parents are dumb. They're they're naive enough to trust their children. <laughs> so they believe, they want to believe that their kids are telling them the truth. You want to believe that your kids are being honest with you and you want to give them that benefit of the doubt. Now, kids have this tendency 
to <laughs> automatically assume my parents, they, you don't trust me. You don't believe me. You don't do this, man. Every time they let you go in the bedroom and you, they go to bed thinking you're going to be there for the whole night. That's a parent trusting you because most parents, be- trust me, gut reaction. When I was a kid, I'd sneak out all the time. I get it. <laughs> so the fact that you actually, you know, go to your room and then you go to bed, that's trusting your kid. All these times when you say go to your room or uh, I'm going to a friend's house and half the time we know that the kids are not going to that friend's house. They're going somewhere else. But you have to trust them that they're going to play, to be smart and do smart things. So you're trusting your kid. Now, kids use that to their advantage. Absolutely. Because kids are crafty. But I don't think that makes the parents dumb or neglectful or anything else. It just means that they are trusting their kids more than they probably should. I agree with that. I mean, I wasn't yeah. like, saying the parents are dumb by any means. I just, and I wouldn't call it neglect for not noticing. I think kids are just pretty good at hiding stuff when they want to. And then, like you said, the parents trust them in what they're what they're saying. Now, could that could that be, you know, after so many times, should you maybe recognize when your kid is lying or not? Hopefully you pick up on it. You know, sometimes you do. You absolutely know they're lying. But I can't also- tell you how many times I knew my kids were lying. I'm just like, hey, yeah, I know. You got me this time, boy, you got me. You, you didn't get me. I saw it. I knew what you're doing. It's just you have to, at some point, you have to, as a parent, I believe, you have to have enough faith in you. If you have faith in your children, you have to let them make life mistakes and learn from those mistakes so that they can learn the same lessons that you learned by making the same life mistakes. Well, and that's what I was going to well, say, but too. But not enough parents are, are just like Zach's, what Zach's saying, where they won't let them make those mistakes. Mm-hmm. They want to just keep them sheltered, and that's where I see what his point is. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that too in, in terms of both of you saying that. I think that that's one of the biggest problems with kids not knowing what to do in circumstances or make those reasonable decisions while they're growing up is they have to be that's how they're going to learn. If you don't allow your child to make decisions when they are growing up, then as they become adults, they won't be able to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. And that is a part of just the lifespan psychology. Like you have to understand that kids need to be able to make those choices. If you never trust them enough to make choices, then they're not going to be able to make them as they grow up and transitioning into adulthood is going to be even more difficult for them. Why do we fall, Mr. Bruce? (laughs) So you learn to pick ourselves up. Exactly. David S. Goyer, he knew what he was writing. <laughs> Excellent point, yeah. Amanda. Excellent point. No, I, don't, I mean, I don't think the parents are neglectful. I think a lot of times when you're reading the news, like about a kid who fell off a bridge or something, weird example. I feel like people, people always jump to the parents being bad. I don't think that's true. I think, I think kids just, they know how to lie better than people want to believe. Children falling into an animal exhibit and well, being killed yes. by an animal. Well, it kind of sounded like maybe that was her fault, but <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted an example. There are times. That I was trying there to help times. You. you know, I think that, that's a really interesting point. I, I as I think parents really believe th- they either want to trust them too much, or they still see them as way younger than they are. So either one of those is probably a fault. So the third question, I think, is just a softball. By the way, did you get into anything similar in your youth with your siblings or close friends? Ooh, no serial killer duns that I can remember. Did you get into, I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Did you get into anything similar in your youth with your siblings or close friends? <laughs> Not the murdering part of frogs. Uh, I probably did that too. Um, <laughs> the story is about Aaron. The answer is yes. I don't know if I necessarily want to tell you what I did. <laughs> we want you to tell us what you did. Uh, Let's hear it. All right, I'll give you a, a, here's a softball. <laughs> Come on, AP. <laughs> you can get the right. good stuff. Uh, let's see. I did steal my mom's car. Wow. Every night, probably <laughs> for about a month. Is your mom listening? Uh, probably I not. I hope not. I really hope not. <laughs> but she, she knows now. I, I came, came glint to her many years later, but I stole my mom's car and we would go out joyriding every night. And I was not legal to drive, by the way. So oh. I did not have a license. I was not 16. She just had a nice new Toyota Celica. I remember it. It was a pretty car. <laughs> was? <laughs> Until. Did you ruin it? I did. So so uh, that's when you came clean, was yeah, when she found it total. Well, <laughs> <laughs> one time I came back and I snuck in and pulled into the garage and hit the garage <laughs> <laughs> and then acted like nothing happened. So there, A, there's, a, there's marks on the car, obviously. 
but there's also a dent in the garage. And I just kept <laughs> walking by like nothing happened. And she's like, really? I didn't notice that? You don't? You think I'm stupid? And eventually I had to say, I don't know what, what happened. I don't know why that would be. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> but yeah, I would drive around town. Auto I don't, coverage? I don't know how many times cops almost like would pull up behind me and we'd be freaking out. Like, oh, I don't have a license. It's my mom's car. And you know she put me in jail. And she totally would. So, but yeah. So there you go. I did that. That's as close as you're getting to the real stuff. Does she have proper auto coverage? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would have covered me. Mm-mm. Oops. That was a stolen car at that time. Grand Theft Auto. If she if she said it that way. She would. I'm okay. telling you, I know my mother. <laughs> she yeah, would. Then yeah, and that... she, rightfully so. Well, I mean, it would have been covered. You just would have also been in trouble legally. Yeah, be in jail. Probably. She'd probably just walk by with the bail money and just keep walking by. <laughs> She'd just fan taunt, herself taunt with, with it. Yeah, just like, da da bill, y'all. Wow. Uh, mom sounds like a snitch, dude. <laughs> right? <laughs> Snitches get stitches. You threaten your mom live on the air? <laughs> I mean, I just said what I said. Amanda, what about, what about you? <laughs> I was not, I don't think I was as rebellious as you were. I I mean, I snuck out a couple of times. It was very minimal. When I was younger and I lived with my mom, I snuck out with my best friend a few times and went with a couple of boys, of course, and we went drinking, yeah. and I was like 15 years old or something. That relationship obviously didn't pan out. <laughs> I'm just letting you know, in every true crime podcast, you die. Every single one. Uh, I'm sure, yeah. Uh, they, they never find you in most of them. Yeah. It, I mean, I I guess I really didn't do anything. I tried not to do anything illegal because I was always afraid of going to jail or really my dad getting mad at me. So I tried to be good. I made stupid mistakes. Like I, I don't know what I, I damaged something at my mom's apartment, like the wall. I damaged my father's carpet because I did makeup in the bedroom. It was easier to just sit on the floor and look in the mirror. And are you going to go through everything you did wrong? (laughs) No, I'm just like this. I don't really, I don't really know what to put on here on this list. I I feel like I need to commit some crimes. It sounds like yes. The answer was yes. (laughs) What about you? Mine are sad. That's not sad. That's, you know, typical. I need to be that was more normal. adventurous. Yeah. Let's go commit some crimes, Once guys. again, according to my cr- true crime podcast, you're lucky you, <laughs> you dodge death a lot. <laughs> That's probably kind of fair. Yeah, exactly. What about you, Zach? What'd you do? Oh, a bunch. Anything oh, similar man. to this? I was a lot more flexible with the law, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't as, I wasn't as concerned. Oh, I mean, I think we've hinted before my garden um, theft spree, but... <laughs> Yeah, I can. Man, I have so many shenanigans. I, I mean, I was in I was in school suspension more often than I was in my classes. You know, I was always up to no good. I know how that goes. I feel you. Yeah, I mean, specifically a fun one is uh, we, me and my brothers and my cousins, like a like group of five of us, all snuck into a chip warehouse. Like a while potato was, chips? <laughs> they yeah, were like hungry. A chip, except it was like some weird foreign chip. Okay. And we all <laughs> we all snuck in and. We thought they were closed. They were very much open, <laughs> but we just we decided to go for it anyway. We just kept we snuck like in between pallets and stuff as forklift drivers drove by and managed to get which got in far enough to steal a bag of chips for each of us and snuck back out. That's like Ocean's was, Eleven for potato <laughs> chips. It was so fun, and the chips were horrible. We each had we, none of us ate in more than one chip. <laughs> they were funny. so bad. I thought of another story, and it's actually kind of scary. Now I'm a little surprised I didn't go to jail. I I don't think I've told you guys this story before, but if I have, just stop me. So when I was in high school, I was the one with the vehicle, and I had a couple of friends who were – well, I had one friend, and he was oh, like, hey – that's a sad story. No, no, no. Um, I'm just – for this story, there was – I was only friends with one of them in the vehicle. That's the point of this. And so he was like, hey, let's skip class or whatever. We'll go for a ride, whatever. And I was like, okay, fine. I hated that school anyway. So we get in the car and he's like, oh, a couple of friends are going to come tag along too. And I was like, oh, sure. You know, that's that's fine, I guess. Like, I don't know them, but hopefully it's not weird. It's a car full of dudes. I was like, this is probably not a good idea. Once again, you end up dead. (laughs) So we're driving around. I'm spending my gas money and I did work for my gas money. And there's some horrible dude you're hanging out. I know. So then no they're like, at all. <laughs> take me, take me over to, or do you mind stopping over at my grandma's house? I want to stop and grab something or say hi to her real quick. And I was like, this is a weird activity to do when you skip school, but sure, let's go to grandma's house. It was right by where we were, coincidentally. 
So we pull up to the house and they're like, oh, you can just wait here. We'll be right back. And I was like, I'm smarter than this. I don't really think so. So they go inside and I could see that they were being a little weird about getting inside, but it was his, it it turns out it was his grandma's house. Mm -hmm. I ended up leaving them there. Good. Because, and as I found out later, they were robbing his grandma's house Mm. and they wanted me to be their escape driver. I was like, you SOBs. (laughs) I have a clean record. Did you say SOB? Because that would be the weirdest thing ever. Can I, (laughs) can I say that on the show? No. No. Okay. That's why I didn't say it. (laughs) <laughs> this is what we call jokes. I used I used a lot of f bombs in that scenario. I was like, man, the worst thing I've done is like get speeding tickets. That's good. Why <sighs> people always get like, man, I wish I would have done more when I was young. No, you don't, because looking back, there's a lot of jail time that could have happened. It's just, yeah, but if it didn't happen, then no regrets. They're cooler stories if you got away with it. There's a lot of people that didn't get. Away. I got a buddy who did not totally got caught when I did not on something. It's trust me. Not as fun. <laughs> not as fun. It's not worth the risk. It's not. You know, I'm all for a few light B and E's, but to rob your own grandma. <laughs> it was so mean. That's and pretty messed up. They didn't even tell me this was their intention. Like, oh hey, at least tell me. Well, that who's going to be down with robbing somebody's grandmother? <laughs> they could have said, <laughs> "Hey, old we're going to grandmother." <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> it was terrible. They are I not was friends. So... No, they weren't. You should have known when they didn't want to give you gas money. Well, I didn't ask them. I was always very polite, and I always tried to help other people. So I'll drive you around in your mi- minor crimes. <laughs> Well, and I I knew there was something sketchy about that. Just the way. At they least you're at the smart house. enough to leave them. Hell yeah! I don't care. Bye, bye, Felicia. <laughs> I didn't. Wow. I didn't get a text though. I heard about it a little bit later through my cousin who you didn't was dating get a text, this person. Like saying what? We were out with my grandma. Saying hey, where'd you go? Like I didn't tell them I was leaving. I just saw them. I was like, nope. Yep. Put that in drive, and I was gone. All right. What else we got, Zach? Well, that was all. Th- that was three questions. Okay, I I can think of a bonus question. Do you think that serial killer got what he deserved? Probably not. Oh no! Mm-hmm. Well, you think he should have been hit with the bat directly? He should have gone to therapy. Um, he should have. Well, I don't know. It depends on did he get therapy before he <laughs> killed anyone? That's really the important question. Did he get what he deserved? No, because I think if they knew that he was killing frogs in that story. They should have went to the police or someone of that's that's like that's beyond this dude's this dude's weird. That dude needs some serious therapy soon. So that's what I would have done instead of breaking out his treehouse. Yeah, sounds more fun. (laughs) Don't make the serial killer angrier. That's what I would say. (laughs) That's how (laughs) all three of those boys end up dead. (laughs) That's how they end up on Aaron's true crime podcast that he listens to. You know, he wasn't oh, really a serial killer until they busted up his treehouse. <laughs> then all of a sudden he snapped, killed all three of them. And their mamas. Followed him by the blood trail in his foot to their house, killed them <laughs> and their family. <laughs> you guys think this is truth or fiction? It sounds real. I'm praying it's fiction. Truth. What? Yeah. Are you one of them in the story? Were you the serial killer? <laughs> Not the serial killer. You were one of the three? I was one of the brothers. Ah, uh, knew it. Uh. Were you one with the foot damage? No. Okay. So you <laughs> I'm the I'm the eldest brother. You're so. swift. I knew it. <laughs> it was the youngest brother who got messed up. So can I ask you what happened with the alleged serial killer? Do you know? He knew I mean he knew it was us, but he could never do anything about it. We just kinda never really hung out with him again. Have you seen him on the news or anything? <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe he's like doing a long con. Twenty five years later he's gonna come back for retribution. <laughs> <laughs> he, has he been on one of my true crime podcasts? <laughs> it could have been. He, might, know? he might be. Mm. Listen to those frog stories, guys. Mm, interesting. The name of the story, Siblings. Aww. Aww. It sounds so sweet and loving. It, was it kind is. Of, it was kind of a it happy a ta- story. Tale of brotherly bonding. We kept that stuff a secret. From, we kept that foot a secret from my mom for an irresponsible amount of time. <laughs> I hope she hears it now. Did the foot like end up okay and everything? Yeah, it was kind of miraculous. It actually was fine. The tr- well, the trick was that you know he still had to go to gym class and stuff, so he just kept Ooh. just battering open the wound every day. Mm, yeah, been there too. <laughs> Keeping a wound a secret? Oh, I had to go to. <laughs> I broke my foot, and my mom because I skipped so much. My mom didn't believe me that it was broken, so she made <laughs> me go to school. And I had to go to gym class, and they I, they even took me to send me to the nurse's office, and he said he think, thinks it's broken. She's like, I don't care, you send him to gym class. So I had to go to gym class on a broken foot, and then later I got an X-ray and found out it was actually broken. 
Yeah. Even sounds, the nurse didn't familiar. believe you. Yeah. Yeah. Because my mom's a nurse. <laughs> To be fair, I missed the month of October, so it isn't like she didn't have justification. <laughs> well, that is the month of Halloween, so I understand. Good choice. Yeah, yeah you had to prep for your costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. There's a lot. All right, well, as our show goes, we will occasionally pick listener stories to read and discuss on Smirk. If you'd like the chance to have yours, read email to mystory at smirkpodcast.com. We've got a couple more coming up. Join the conversation by joining our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter at Smirk Podcast, and be sure to use the show's hashtag, Smirk. And please be sure to share the show if you're really enjoying it. Please share it on your social media outlets, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you use, because that's how people will find out about it. And don't miss an episode. You subscribe on your podcast app of choice and check out our website at smirkpodcast.com. And as you write your own life story, always remember to tell it with a smirk. But I'm more concerned with what else did your brothers do? Because apparently you you decided that yeah, this one, guy was one, a serial killer. How do you know he just didn't like frogs? <laughs> <laughs>